Thank you, Andy. College football now, just one game left in the season. Ohio State and Oregon meet on Monday, both teams now in tux Texas. Ducks arriving without their number two wide receiver, Darren Carrington, who caught a pair of touchdown passes in Oregon's Rose Bowl win over Florida State. Carrington reportedly suspended for a failed drug test. Buckeyes getting a nice send off from fans braving the cold in Columbus this afternoon. Game will be played indoors so the weather won't be a factor in chilly North Texas. But Urban Meyer admits he is concerned about his team playing a 15th game. Tight end Jeff Hyman and H-back Dontre Wilson have both been labeled probable for Monday's game. In fact, Wilson practiced today before they left for Columbus as he has been out since breaking a bone in his foot in a win over Michigan State. Oregon is the favorite. Marks the seventh time Ohio State has not been favored with Myers head coach and they've won the previous six times as the underdogs including the Big Ten title game and in the Sugar Bowl against Alabama. Despite losing seven players who started at least one game as a rookie this year in the NFL, Buckeyes are playing for a national title. Proof that this team has improved mentally from last year's team that was perhaps more talented. I certainly didn't devalue. It was one I you know, you just don't know because you can't measure that. You can measure a 40-yard dash and how many times they can do 225 and those type of things and how hard they throw a ball. But you don't, that's why I point to the Penn State game. We played awful against Penn State in a tough environment. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about athletics in this game is that the, the immeasurables are the thing that win games. And that's when recruiting, that's why you like, I go back to, I can go off and off about this, but get them to camp and find out what they're made of. You know, here's a guy that runs for 4,000 yards, but they're playing bad teams, and he's bigger and faster. And when you find out when he, you get him that he's, he's, he's not that. And that's the, that's the intangible value of this great game of football that's been around way before us, and we're going to be here way after us. And that's what this team developed and has. No question it has. Kind of feeling, a, a vibe that we all get. I mean, it's, it, 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 it kind of goes, go, goes to the hunger that we have as a team. I mean, we're so hungry. We play with a chip on our shoulder, and we go out there, and we do everything for each other, and that hunger is for each other. And them putting us as, as underdogs, as I said earlier, I mean, let them. I mean, at this point, I don't care. We plus, play so well as underdogs. I mean, I don't really get, care what they predict the score to be because I know what we're going to go out there and do and, and what we're going to go out there and stop them from doing. So, I mean. Let's go play ball. In other news today, latest class of College Football Hall of Fame is announced, including former well, Buckeye head coach Jim Trestle. Currently the president at Youngstown State, Trestle led Ohio State to the national championship in 2002, plus won four 1AA titles with the Penguins, the only coach to win titles at both levels. Technically, Trestle is being inducted for his success at Youngstown State as he's still under a two-year show cause penalty with the NCAA. Officially, Trestle's record 229, 78-2 over 24 years as head coach before resigning in 2011, the scandal that cost him 12 wins in 2010 and ultimately his job. Trestle joins his father, the late Lee Trestle, an Aiden native in the Hall of Fame, as well as Buckeye predecessors Woody Hayes, Earl Bruce, and John Cooper. Trestle will also attend the national championship game on Monday. He'll be one of five members of the new class of inductees to participate in the pregame coin toss.